What's up everybody, we're back for episode 3 in our series comparing the differences between Snap Poker and Zoom Poker on 888 and PokerStars respectively. We're going to start today with uh, the next level up in the series, 10 cent, 25 cent, which doesn't actually exist on 888. They have 15 cent, 30 cent, so a slight difference there, straight out of the gate. Um, as I was sitting down to start making this video for you guys, we played a hand which uh, I think is too good really not to share. This was obviously the very first hand I sat in at the table. And if we just let this play, obviously, get dealt the aces, our man raises. Uh, as you'll notice, not in for the, for the full $30, so we assumed uh, maybe more of a recreational player. Three bet him to $2.40. Called. Not a great flop. Um, I decided to try and keep his range a little bit wider here. We went for a check call. Um, obviously, no intention of folding at this point. Turns a little bit uh, dicey um, when he just shoves. But I'm pretty sure we're still ahead of a decent amount of hands. I wasn't happy about calling. Obviously, we lose to ace-jack, king-queen, king-ten, tens, queens and kings. But I think he's going to have some ace-king, king-jack, and then some queen-jack. And maybe, if he's a recreational player, some, some wider calls. So we ended up making the call. And if you called five two of hearts, I owe you an ice cream. Because uh, I don't think many of us will have expected that hand so perhaps an early indication of how these games are going to play on 888 if uh, if that's anything to go by we should be in for a fun session so i thought i'd just start you off with that one we will jump straight in we've got um 10 cent 25 cent zoom over here and we've got 15 cent 30 cent 888 over here we're going to be playing for 30 minutes and Trying to look into some of the differences, some of the general strategies that are going to help you guys to win in these games. Hopefully you guys have checked out the first two episodes in this series where we played 5 and L and uh, 10 and L. Definitely worth checking out if you haven't already. I'm going to fold the king through over here on the button, obviously taking a flop and flopping very well uh, on 888. This guy seems to be having a good night, up to $171 stack. Uh, looks like a recreational player to our left. Definitely just going to lead with our three tens here, and unfortunately pick it up on the flop. So again, I think uh, it's going to be a case of trying to find where our weaker weaker opponents are going to be. I've been playing uh, a lot of 25 now the last few months, obviously for my uh, bankroll challenge. In terms of how it plays compared to 10, um, I think there are still a very decent amount of recreational players. There are obviously some people who are starting to take the game a little more seriously, who are going to give you uh, a few few things to think about. We've got to be um, a little bit uh, aware of that. Uh, over here, I think this guy, from what we know, seems to be recreational on a very dry board. We're just going to make a c-bet blind v blind. And over here on the right, I think we can defend with the ace-8. And uh, we don't flop ticky well. Uh, Left-hand side, I think our opponent's range in the big blind is still going to be quite wide. Uh, we're going to go for the barrel here with uh, our additional equity. We're going to get him off some 5x, some 4x, and you know some stubborn floats. We do pick up a gut shot ourselves. Right-hand side, not the sort of texture I really want to mess around with too much. Uh, we don't know anything about our opponents just yet. So I think uh, just giving up with the ace-8 here seems reasonable. Close decision here with the ace-jack of hearts. Not too keen on flatting. Um, too wide in the small blind overall, and especially not versus an under-the-gun open. We do have a potential recreational player in the big blind, who, uh, based on my HUD stats, is uh, 45 over 18. I chose not to show the HUD today, just because I've changed it a little bit, and it's really overwhelming now, if it wasn't already enough before. Um, so we're going we're gonna to leave that. If there's any reason, um, any decision I make that is based on those stats, I'll be sure to, to let you know, you know what's going on with it. Uh, we don't flop particularly well here, multi way I think we're just going to... Uh, Check and fold to a bet from either opponent. Despite our good backdoors and overs, I don't think we really want to call out a position here without the initiative. Right-hand side, for 30 cents, we're just going to fold. And again, I don't really th don't really think uh, it's a good situation for us to be bluffing here with the ace-jack on the turn into two people. And likewise, the river. Right-hand side, we will be opening the button. Looks like Grand Tuga, potentially a weaker player given that he's not in for 30 bucks, but uh, the auto rebuy is a little bit tricky to to uh, fix up, as as we've seen in previous episodes, so not necessarily a recreational, maybe. I mean, I guess if he's a regular player, he'll have sorted the auto rebuy by, uh, by now. So most likely a solid read that most recreationals won't have the auto top up on. 
This guy is, uh, I feel for you, my dude. We've been having some run bad recently on my stream. He apparently uh, has been tuning in. Couple of bad sessions, but hopefully, uh, hopefully a winning one today. Queen Jack's certainly going to be a hand that we open. 7 3. Very little interest in that at all. So we're going to take a look at the lobbies here. Currently on 888, you've got 30, uh, sorry, my bad, 23 different players, um, which is obviously a much smaller pool than you have on PokerStars. So the PokerStars lobby at the moment has 162 entrants uh, at 25 now, which is on the low side. I'm recording this video uh, quite late in the evening, late at night, should I say. Um, usually the pool's a little bit busier, but 22 players on 888, which... Um, when you have such a smaller player pool, it's going to be really important for us to, if we're playing this 888 game consistently, take a note of who are the regular players and be making notes, because you don't have a, a, a HUD on 888, take notes on the regular players. Understand how they play, understand what lines they take in certain situations, because unlike on PokerStars, where our opponents are going to be uh, very different a lot of the time, uh, on 888, because of the small player pool, we're going to be playing against the same people very often. Um, Devil Moon here looks again like a recreational player. Um, we are not going to do anything silly with the 7-2 off. It's the worst hand in Hold'em, don't you know? We're going to complete for 15 cents over here on the right, though. Um, I mean, he's probably got any two cards at this point. Can't hurt to, to make a pot size bet and just get him to fold some better high cards. Right-hand side, multi I don't think I want to get involved. We do have a pair, but uh, not particularly great equity against anything that calls us and I don't think uh, really strong enough to continue on the right king eight off on the button is probably one of the weaker hands I would open if it gets folded to me here uh, as played we're just chucking it into the bin we're actually playing five handed here I guess that's just the nature of the game with so few players can always fill it up Uh, Left-hand side, I think defending the Jack-10 off in the big blind is uh, pretty reasonable. When we don't see a C-bet on the Queen-5-4 flop, um, I would anticipate some sort of showdown value. It's a pretty dry board, so if our opponent is going to... Um, has nothing, for example, if he has a hand similar to mine, I think he just bets flop, uh, given the dry texture. So when he checks back, I'm going to assume some sort of showdown value, um, be it a 5 or an ace-high, which probably doesn't fold this turn. Um, is certainly not folding river. I'd be surprised if we get to the river here and he, you know, he has complete air. So I don't really feel like we should turn a hand into a bluff. Let's open the button on the right hand side. We get a call. And again, I'm going, I'm playing these guys pretty blind. I have no idea. Um, I know this guy on my left does not fold. I have a stat here uh, that he's big blind versus small blind. He's folding very, very little. And he's also three betting like crazy. So I don't know. This is close. Um... I think we'll open Jack-9. Certainly one of the weaker hands I want to open against this opponent. We want to tighten up our range against him a lot, just because he's 3-betting us a lot. He's not really folding. Difficult to play out of position with weak ranges versus the big blind. Uh, and a suited ace under the gun. Uh, seems like a decent open. Apparently the big blind on the right-hand side has got a very important decision to make for... Uh, an extra one and a half big blinds. Eventually decides to call. And a pretty mediocre flop for the A6. Again, this is one where we're just going to get too many hands to continue. So we can't really see bet with our A6. King to on the buttons just to fold. And A6 off. Eh, we're probably going to open into the big blind. Uh, cutoff seems pretty tight. I think if he raises, it's just going to be a fold. We can potentially 3-bet versus the button. Which is what I think we will do. And we get called and flop impeccably well. Definitely going to bet here. Um, I think we should bet really small. It's a dry-ish ace-high board. Uh, we should be looking to bet most of our range at three bets from the small blind uh, in this situation. We're just going to bet a third pot and see if we can't induce um, some lighter cooldowns. 
we do turn the nut flush draw to go with it. And uh, we're going to bet again. Around half pot, unfortunately, our opponent just folds. But I think a smaller size in there is going to induce um, him to call fairly wide. I mean, our hand is obviously very strong. Um, but his, his range in turn is still very wide. So he's still going to have hands like 7, 8, second pair that want to call and float. And potentially get funky on that turn, which we wouldn't have been too upset with, of course. Nine two off is one of the least attractive hands you'll be dealt in no limit. As is five three. Couple of hands for the monk. Not too much um, in terms of differences between the limits at the moment. Like I say, we're seeing a lot of similar faces over here. Um, and a couple of guys, like the guy to our right here, Kuzia, who's only got the six dollars. There's a few people who don't have much of a stack who are probably going to be stacking off pretty wide. Uh, same as your man, Grand Tuga here, who we've already got marked up uh, with the eleven dollars. Definitely going to open this versus the um, big blind, ace, ten of clubs. And should we be three bet, I imagine we would defend. We're going to take a C bet now. Um, pretty big. I think our, our value hands would want to bet bigger on this flop because of the texture. So in general, we should be sizing up on this on this texture uh, with a ten. This is going to be a decent spot to bet. Now I really don't know. Um, most players are going to play pretty quickly with hands like Jack Ten here, uh, even sets here. Occasionally two pairs, probably just going to call flop, which I think is the more standard play. Um, so if we get called, we may decide to go for three streets. It would be much better for us uh, on the left hand side. I think we're just going to fold. Uh, it would be much better for us if we had a spade blocker, but with the 10, uh, I don't mind continuing here. I think if we fire two, we probably have to fire three, just because he still has hands uh, that defend in the big blind, like king eight with a spade that call turn fold river. And I think he probably has a lot of combos um, of that ilk that we can bet twice against and bet the river against and get a fold. Obviously, way better for us to have... Um, a spade blocker in our hand but even without one I think people tend to fold this river too much just because they play most of their very strong hands quickly on the flop in this instance it looks like either he's gonna bluff some sort of spade combo or he has a flush um, obviously we have no choice but to fold left hand side gonna defend the ace nine and I think we can call the flop Eh, we're going to be defending a lot here. I don't know. Maybe we need a backdoor flush draw. We do have a backdoor straight draw on ASI. I think for the sizing, uh, we can call one. We're still ahead of a lot of draws. This isn't a turn I really expect him to um, barrel that often. Uh, obviously, at this point, we're just checking down. Can't really call a bet, but expect to win a lot if it checks through. And we chop with his ace high. Uh, Jack five of hearts, probably just a fold. Uh, it's closer with this guy in the big blind, but I think it's a little bit too wide. So, um, like I said, I've been playing a decent amount of the 25 and L pool recently. There are definitely some um, some weaker players. Um, the differences you'll notice between that and 10 and L that we played last video is probably uh, a little bit more aggression pre-flop. Uh, a few more people willing to bluff. So you may be looking for spots um, that potentially are easy folds previously that we may have to start calling uh, at 25. With that said, typically people still don't bluff anywhere near enough. And we should definitely be giving... Uh, credit um, to most strong lines. Um, that said, there are some of the, the regulars here are making bluffs. We're going to bet for value protection with the queen nine here against a guy with six six dollars. Um, and on this turn, I think we're going to bet we can still fold out some better hands, possibly twos, threes, fours, that um, don't bet the flop, some ace, jack, ace, king, better ace size. Obviously, his range on the button is very wide. And uh, for the most part, we're probably just folding out weaker hands, but we do have the ace of diamonds and Betting seems slightly better than a check. Uh, I think one of two things are true at this river. Either he has a 10, and obviously he's never folding it. Um, or he has some sort of draw or ace high, which unless we, we bet really small, we might get called by ace high. But I think there's better EV uh, to be had just by jamming and getting a 10 to pay us off always. On the right-hand side, rather, we see a raise and a 3-bet. 
three bet versus under the gun open. We're just going to fold the king queen until we know more about that player. Um, there could be an argument for making a cold four bet. We have very good blockers to a value range. Uh, we block ace king, kings, and queens. But we've no we've no information to suggest that that player you know three bets particularly wide versus under the gun and I think that's the main disadvantage of being on eight eight eight. Yes, there are much softer games as you saw before we started uh, the hand the aces versus the the guy with two five or whatever. Um, but versus the regulars, it's probably harder for us to play because we have no um, statistical information um, to go on. Whereas on this left hand side, I can see that this guy's opening twenty three percent of hands under the gun, which is pretty wide. Um, Typically, an under-the-gun opening range should be somewhere about 17-18%. Um, so when he opens, he's also got a high fold to 3-bet. We can 3-bet bluff with the king-queen, just because it blocks, um, like I said, the kings, the queens, the ace-king. So it's more likely he has the weaker parts in his range. Um, we get cold poured by Ainsley Harriet. I think we're going to make a small bet here. We do block some jack-x, queen-jack and king-jack. Interesting backdoors, so I don't mind taking a c-bet here. Uh, and on the right-hand side, we are going to re-raise our recreational, suspected recreational player with the two queens. Um, I would imagine this guy's range is pretty strong at this point. Uh, old Ainsley over here. I don't think it's a turn I necessarily want to bet again. Just going to uh, check and give up. Right-hand side's close. I think I prefer a check. People, when there's a lot of money in the middle and they don't have a lot behind, tend to bet very often and with a lot of weak hands. So we're going to let them do that, which uh, obviously that works out perfectly. He just shoves the ace-10. Uh, and we pick it off with the queen queen left hand side um imagine i had a hand here like queens kings or aces um i would definitely check this turn in order to check call rather than bet myself just because uh it's a little bit thin betting on the jack with those hands and i want some hands in my check call range uh, so i'm not worried about getting exploited folding king queen here since i would just play my over pairs exactly the same but call so this with this one we're just gonna fold Not that we should be particularly worried about getting exploited there, just because when he cold calls a 3-bet, it's probably just the fact that he's got a pretty strong hand. Obviously, we bet the flop because occasionally we're going to get folds out of uh, ace-king, king-queen. If he has, like, pocket eights that are expected to go multi-way or something, um, we can potentially barrel some turns, a 10, potentially. Um, not too many opportunities for that, admittedly, but um, I think betting slightly better than checking with our backdoors um, in general. Queen-queen. That's a good one. Let's raise. Terrible flop. We're going to go with a check. Over here again, um, very close. We could potentially call. I think it would be a little bit wide. This is a reasonable hand to 4-bet bluff with. Uh, and this does look like one of the more regular players. He'll know nothing about me either, which uh, can potentially work to our benefit. So I'm actually going to chuck in a 4-bet bluff and just see where we see where we land with that one left hand side um i'm gonna call one people at this limit tend to stab the turn and then give up a lot with their bluffs that didn't go quite as we'd hoped over here we just get min five bet uh against which we are folding i mean we're getting an insane price actually do i really want to be the guy flatting five bets on stream though i mean he's made this so small it's insane what are we getting here? Four to one or something? I mean, our hand is very, very easily crushed. But he has made a very small raise, and we do have position. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, go on then. Oh, this, this is not where we want to be. I mean, it's kind of unavoidable now. Uh, left hand side, we're going to call here with um, the threes. I mean,. We can potentially get him off ace-king if he has that later on, but I think uh, taking a check is not the worst decision. If he's got kings, aces, queens, obviously he's just checking to trap us, so we're going to check behind with one. Man, this is a this is a real butchered hand, eh? We probably don't even have odds to call now to try and uh, draw to the heart on this card, so I'm actually just going to fold despite the fact that we flopped a flush draw. Uh, I don't think Ace King takes this line. If it does, it's not going to fold now anyway. Uh, we're not getting the correct price to call ten here to to try and draw to our to our flush. So, despite our good flop, we are just going to fold. That's a real awkward one, just because the sizing preflop so small. I think it would be a mistake to fold, and then I think it would be a mistake to bet flop, just because I don't think enough of his range is going to fold flop. He might even get stubborn with the Ace Kings, you know. 
so it's just a case of trying to check back, realize equity. I mean, if the turn isn't a two, occasionally he's going to check and we can potentially bluff him off Ace King. A um, little bit wishful thinking. I think uh, not too many folds being generated at any point in that hand. I'm sure uh, there'll be some discussion about that at hand, which uh, which is fine. I don't think I don't think we can fold for the small sizing in position. We're going to bet on the left hand side with the queen jack of hearts. Um, pretty bad turn. I don't think I want to bluff if I have hearts in my hand. I would much rather have my bluff here be something like 6-7 of diamonds, 7-8 of diamonds. Um, just because if we bet, we want him to be able to have heart combos that will fold. Uh, not ideal when we block them, of course. We're just gonna We're just going to give it up now. Right hand side just leading small and a limp pot for, for value against this guy who's limped I'm assuming is going to be recreational. We're going to bet again. We do have the ace of diamonds. Uh, we're going to bet again or we're going to check call. I think we're going to bet again. A little bit thin but uh, against the recreational I think there's definitely some, some merit to it. And I think uh, despite the, the fact that this is four to the straight we should be looking to try and get a value bet here in a limp pot. All his other two pair combos are going to call ace-5, ace-8, ace-7, ace-9, eight-nine, eight-seven. Um, so definitely worthwhile. And we can be pretty content um, if we get raised that we're just crushed. But we do get paid off for the half-pot bet of the river. We will see what looked us up. Ace-4. So if he's calling all his one pair combos, um, you should be able to see it actually. There you go. Ace-4 uh, calling here. So if he's calling all his one pair combos as well, then it's an easy value bet, of course. We get another limp from this guy, and he's just demonstrated his lack of willingness to fold. So we're going to make it pretty big. Um, I don't want to make it that big. I can't work out my sizings at this limit, but this seems fine. In position with the nines, just going to be looking for value spots against him. We do get three bet from computer says no. This guy folds. Again, I think uh, be incorrect to fold here. We're going to defend the pocket nines. And as a default, I think our strategy would be to call at least one bet on the flop and probably fold to turn aggression. Um, we are going to check again on the turn. He only has six outs if he's got ace, king, ace, queen. So we're not too concerned about that. We can potentially get value from those at the river. I think if we bet half pot now, we're almost always getting looked up by the ace high. Uh, so that is exactly what we're going to do. But he folds. Right hand side is kind of close. The question you've got to ask yourself in these spots is can we get three streets of value on the majority of runouts? Um, and the answer is potentially no here if this guy's a regular. Uh, but he is one tabling, so I think we'll go for it. Typically, if we right click and search this player, you can't see it showing up because of the way the capture is working. But uh, he is only playing one table and isn't hidden from the searcher. That, that would be more. I'd be more inclined to think he's a recreational player um, because of that. The turn is potentially a pretty good card for us. Obviously, we improve against 10-9. Um, the straight draws don't get there. The flush draws don't get there. We're going to bet again for value pretty big. He's almost never folding a 10. Um, most of the time calling a 9, especially if it's something like jack-9, 8-9 with a straight draw. Ace-9 probably calling. Um, Queen-jack, of course, calling. Diamond combos calling. Sometimes he has a hand like 7-8 here. Sometimes he has a full house here. But uh, definitely a value bet. We beat more combos than beat us. And uh, a lot of them are going to call. Right hand side seems very good. We flop basically the nuts. We're going to bet half pot. Immediate fold from this cigar smoking baby daddy. And unfortunately we get a fold on the turn here with the kings. Uh, we've got about five minutes left here. We've had some interesting situations for sure. I'm sure that king six of uh, hearts is going to ruffle some feathers. But um, overall, like I say, I'm pretty happy given given the small sizing pre-flop and our lack of fold equity post. What other hands have we had? Um, we picked off the guy with the queens. I think that's quite an interesting thing. And I noticed there's an awful lot. When you're playing against the recreational players, if they got like 11, 12 bucks and they put in three pre-flop and then they end up with nine post-flop in the pot six, 
They're at a point now where they need to win that pot. They need that money back. As a percentage of their stack, that's a decent amount out there. So if you check to them, um, very often they'll make that Hail Mary bluff that's like, right, we're in this far. I need that money back. Best way to do it, shove all in and try and steal the pot. That's the way a recreational player is going to see it. So definitely don't want to recommend checking hands like queens to a recreational player because a lot of the time they are going to check back if you're 100 big blinds deep or even if you're 80 big blinds deep. But when the stack and the pot, when the ratio is very close and there's a lot of their, you know, compared to their stack that they have, there's a lot of money already in the pot, checking to them quite often they're making that Hail Mary bluff. Um, so definitely something to consider is uh, checking to your opponent in that spot. Uh, left hand side we get a limper with the two stars showing I'm going to assume this is a, a weaker player so we're going to size up here with the top two pair really close with the king 10 off I think we're going to just fold we are five handed but uh, I still think it's a little bit weak to open here Eh, yeah, this is close. I mean, this is a pretty terrible hand. We are getting uh, just a min open. Potentially going to come along for a call if we get decent uh, value. I think it would be a mistake. We'll be a small one to fold for the extra big blind here. Pretty dreadful hand, though. Uh, right hand side is certainly a hand that I'd be interested in playing. This player has 4x open pre-flop. Uh, so against that, we're going to fold. Against the 3x, we can consider a call five-handed. Um, much happier on the button, but less happy here. And especially versus sizing, just going to take the fold. And I'm not going to get involved. We've got very little equity in the pot here with the 6-7. Now we've got to wait for more players. Come on, guys. I'm in the pool. It should be four. It should be four. I just caught a five bet with king five suited. Opening against Booth Control, who uh, seems to be having quite the night of it. Nearly $200 stack at 15 cent, 30 cent. Not doing too badly ourselves, though. Between stacking the guy with aces and uh, we're up a little bit for this session, I think. Obviously, opening the ace-10 on the button. If we see a three-bet from the small blind, we are likely defending in position. This is probably the most aggressive dynamic, right? When we open the button, we get three-bet out of the blinds quite often. Um, and position is power. I definitely think we should be calling fairly wide. A really interesting flop. Um, so again, it's back to can I bet three streets and expect to get called by worse here? And I think the answer is no. Um, he is going to have some aces that check this flop. Things like ace four suited, ace five suited if he three bet them from the blinds. I think the best bet is to check back and then go for two streets of value. Uh, bet turn and river. Um, against his ace size, he's probably going to call king x once on the turn. If he has a hand like king queen, I think he calls turn once, king ten suited, things like that. So we're going to go for a value bet on turn and then another one on the river. But our opponent just uh, taps out on the turn, gives up with it. We're going to open under the gun. We've got a recreational player in the big blind. This is a really close open under the gun. Um, a lot of players will advocate folding it, which I think is the more standard play. When you've got a, a recreational pre-marked player in the big blind, you can definitely widen your range a little bit um, just to try and target him play as many hands with him as possible um, flops an interesting one it's such a dry board that i'd be betting all of my air here so i feel like i should bet all of my king x as well if we don't bet king jack here uh, then we just end up having too many bluffs when we bet flop because it's a board that all my air wants to bet i do think there's a, a good argument can i get three streets in this hand no because i don't think a, rec a regular player is going to call with, like king 10 here um so I think checking is good. Uh, all of my air would give up. This really is the nut worst run out, the Ace of Diamonds River. Uh, we're still ahead of things like pocket sevens, pocket nines, which are going to call. I don't think we can value bet. Um, and I don't think we can call River. But if it checks, checks, we're expecting to win a lot of the time. So in this spot, if he's probably going to end up with something like pocket sevens, uh, would be my best guess. Uh, he has the pocket nines, which, yeah, it's, it's, it's about what we expected. So if this river is a deuce, a three, a four, another five, a six, a seven, obviously not a nine, uh, a ten even, and we make a small half pot size bet, more often than not, I expect players at this limit to get curious and cool with the nines. So I think in general, our strategy of bet check bet uh, is going to be a solid one. But obviously in this instance, the river does not want to cooperate. Uh, recreational player limped here. Uh, we're going to go for a 
two streets with the a7 we chop with most of his other weaker ace x now so i think the real value in the pot is checking to try and bluff catch against uh say if he wants to turn five four into a bluff for example or spades um just giving him the check call and he has ace four which we chop with like I say, not too much value in betting just because we chop with all his aces. So we really need him to bet his bluffs to, you know, to make any money there. I'm going to make a raise with the ace nine. We have hit 30 minutes. So we are going to sit out our next big blinds, play our free hands, and then call that a session. Not before, of course, that we three bet here uh, with the pocket tens, blind v blind. And again, a pretty aggressive dynamic, uh, blind v blind. So more than happy to be 3-betting the 10s. I think this is, is, a, is a very, very clear 3-bet. Uh, and on the flop, again, it's one of those where a lot of my air is going to want to bet. So we're going to bet with the two 10s. I expect him to 4-bet queens plus almost always. Um, potentially he doesn't 4-bet jacks, uh, but we should have the best time more often than not. Not too many 9x in his defense range as well. So I think for the most part here, he's going to have... Um, some ace high calls on the flop. He's going to have some club draws. He can potentially have some pocket eights, pocket sevens. We are going to bet the turn again. And most likely check back the river, I think. I don't think, uh, not without knowing any more about this opponent, I don't think we can get him to call three streets with pocket sevens. So I think betting the river would be a little bit too thin. I think potentially we're only getting called by better hands now, which would include obviously his 9x uh, if he has ace-jack of spades, king-jack of spades uh, that he floated. Um, eh, it's certainly close, but I think a check is, is the best play. And uh, he gets there with the jack-10 of clubs, so uh, we put all our money in with the best hand, and he gets pretty lucky on the river, uh, but we, we do lose the minimum. We just, we make the, you know, the correct play in checking behind there, but we got all our money in with the best hand. And of course, in poker, my friends... That is all we can do. When I done on poker stars, we don't want to call a three bet with the ace four offsuit. We're going to fold, and it looks like that concludes. No, it doesn't. We're still going. Apparently, they're still dealing me free hands. Eight nine off out of position isn't uh, going to get played if the button decides to open. Especially that is nine dollars, correct? So definitely worth sticking around. You can see here on 888, Mr. X Gamer uh, appears to be here for a good time, not a long time, opening to $9, which is, you know, roughly $8.30 more than we would uh, have anticipated. Definitely a fold for me. That concludes the session. Thanks, everybody, for watching this uh, 25 and L and, I guess, 30 and L grind on 888. Hopefully, uh, we've given a little bit of an insight into the games there. Thanks very much for hanging out. My name is Spraggy, and I look forward to seeing you next time.